Good evening, everybody. Welcome to The Connection Show. Today, I'm so excited to have Henry Cameron on the show. Henry Cameron is an art director, theater director, in fact, and I'll let him tell you more all about it. Welcome, welcome, Henry Cameron. Thank you so much for tuning in, joining us all the way from Spain. Amazing. Yes. So which city is it in Spain that you are actually located? It's a tiny, tiny, tiny little village uh, called Arroyo Molinos de Montanches. Wow. And it <laughs> settled in 1228. And it was, um, it's about three hours from Madrid. So it's in the southwest of the country near Portugal. Wow. Beautiful. Amazing, amazing. I was in Madrid in 1997. That was so long ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and I also visited Barcelona. And that was so long ago. My goodness, I might, there must be so much change by now. So how well, it's is time it? to come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So please share with our viewers what you're up to, what you're doing. Well, I, I feel like a, a circus juggler or a plate spinner. You know how they have like five different plates spinning and on the sticks. Um, <laughs> well, as you said, I'm a, a theater director, theater artist. Um, I am developing an international organization right now uh, that would bring together uh, performers, designers, uh, writers from all around the world uh, to explore through theater the dance between the human physical and the human spiritual on the stage, which I think would be really uh, timely right now. We're all struggling with those uh, within ourselves. We're, we're finding that balance. We always have been, haven't we? And so uh, I think theater is a wonderful way to bring that forward. Um, I also have a, uh, a nonprofit organization uh, called the Lost Travelers Club, and that is for parents who have outlived their children, like myself, and uh, have had a struggle stepping back into the world. Um, it's not a world that will adapt to a person who's experienced such a loss, and so we must find ways to adapt to the world. And it's easier to do in numbers and groups, and so. Uh, and so together we will step out into the world um, powerfully and find a new way of being. Um, of course, right now with uh, travel being very, very minimal, uh, there are ways to do this virtually. And so I created a virtual platform as well uh, that we can experience that and, and plan for the future, exciting adventures. Um, and not connected to that program, but I also have a, uh, a life skills podcast every week called The Lost Traveler. And in that sense, we are all lost travelers. We're facing a time right now that we've not met in our lifetimes. And on a global scale, we are all pioneers. We all have this opportunity to be both teacher and student and to talk about how we can pull together and, and develop and cultivate the life skills that we need to meet this time, but also an uncertain future. And that's where you and I connect uh, in, our, in our work. It ah. sounds amazing because, you know, uh, it, to me, what you're trying to do is connect all the parents who are in similar situation. And it's all about uniting everybody together or, or connecting everybody together so that you can all share the same journey together. That's what well, I'm hearing. You, when you say parents, it's absolutely right, because mm -hmm. whether you are a parent uh, and, and have the blessing of, of living children to, to care for and to guide, mm -hmm. or whether you are a parent who has sadly lost your child in this mm -hmm. life, um, or if you're of an age where you don't have children um but are capable of having children that means you're in the parenting generation doesn't it and yeah. so all eyes are on us yeah right whether we have children lost children or don't have children mm -hmm. we have an opportunity to rise up and be an example for for our children that are coming up to this generation mm -hmm. uh to look for, for how to be in the world they're looking mm -hmm. to us and they're they're also learning to look within themselves yeah it's to me the whole theme is you're trying to connect with everybody and even though with your um 
side project you said the travelers podcast even though you say it it's separate but to me it's still connected because the name is still the lost travelers same as your non-profit organization so really it's yeah. all connected isn't it yeah it's it like, is hmm. it is indeed <laughs> thank you for noticing that i think it is you're right <laughs> Yeah. It's all about connection. And when one is lost, uh, it's better to have more heads thinking for a solution than just your own, right? Yes, and yes. So, when right, you're together. It, it all about yeah. yeah, so when you're together, you don't feel so alone. And, you know, when you're together, you have the company, the connection, the love to actually share thoughts and ideas and companies to do it together. Because otherwise, it's too hard, isn't it? It's too hard to go just. I mean, the situation is already challenging in itself when you lost your own child and then to have to go through it all along, it's just way too lonely. So congratulations. I, I'm so amazed, so impressed that you, you do that. You step in, step up to do that for everybody. That's amazing. Well, I feel like, like you, I've had a, a kind of a unique biography and to draw from that, to be able to, I've always felt uh, a calling, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, where that deep, that deep uh, contentment in your mm -hmm. soul mm -hmm. meets a great need in the world. I think that's that's a person's calling, and and I've always felt called to be a teacher and a mentor in the world. And it just so happens that I have all these life experiences that have given me incredible tools for my kit not only for my own life, but that I can freely share with others. And that's, uh, that's an exciting thing to see other people synthesize the tools that we've gleaned in our biography uh, with the ones that they've collected in their biography and create unique tools for their lives. It's beautiful. That's, that's amazing. Then that brings the curiosity then. I've got you what inspired you to pick up my book then. <laughs> well... You know, I think that um, very often with a book, uh, I don't have a book yet. And so I'm, I'm always very interested in people who are, uh, you know, talking about uh, tuning in and connecting to other people the way that you do. And um, very often you hear about these things or you'll read about these things or you'll hear word of mouth. Um, with you, uh, I met you first. I to know you and, you know, through uh, our life skills mentoring work. Um, we got to meet one another and I became very intrigued with not only your positive attitude and the energy that you're putting out there, uh, but then I joined one of your Three Hearts Global uh, Connection groups uh, and found even broader community from all over the world, people that are tuned into that same frequency and I learned more about you and so I wanted to know more deeply what you were about and of course here was this beautiful roadmap that you have not only as a window into your calling but also a window into you yourself and um, and I feel much closer to you now having read your book so oh, thank you I think that you know very often when you're traveling in circles and you're meeting different people or you're hearing about different people who are doing similar work mm. um, and they have a book Right. right, that that might right. draw you to look them up or look into a book. But right. for okay. my, I, I, I got to meet you first. Okay. And that Everybody seemed to have um, gained different takes to, from the book. Is there a particular story or chapter that resonated with you most? You know, uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about your style of writing is that it's like a meditation. It gently lifts you out of yourself and takes you on this very gentle and beautiful uh, adventure. And um, what I what I really appreciated was that everything you weren't presenting yourself as I am the world expert on all these things. And no, it was just really you're you are an expert, but you are rooted in your journey and that. You know, your biography has been the, the crucible or the birthplace of, uh, of the, the tools that you have gleaned for yourself that you're now imparting to other people. And that threads all the way through the book. And 
I just, I felt like I was in a beautiful boat on a river and just going down and seeing scenes from your life, right? But then at every certain stop, there was a little restaurant or something and you could sort of consume a little bit of the delicious food that you got to prepare and, and on your journey. And, um, and so all the way through, I, I wouldn't say there was one chapter or one thing. I, I think that uh, it's very, very full. Um, but I didn't finish the book feeling overstuffed. I, I, I finished the book, uh, which I read in one sitting. Um, I, 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 I finished the book feeling validated. I finished the book feeling um, like I knew you better, that I got to experience almost like a travelogue, uh, another culture that I hadn't been familiar with other than superficially. Um, I got to meet your beautiful family through your eyes mm -hmm. and know, know how the connection to your large and beautiful family was really the foundation of, of the connection to yourself. And, uh, yeah, so I, I can't pinpoint that there was one chapter or one thing. I love the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> I am so pleased you, you got to travel through the book. You got to experience. And it sounded so beautiful when you say you're like on, you're on this journey, you're on the boat, and then you, got, you made stops. <laughs> I think that's right. what life is, isn't it? You know, when we get to experience from a different angle or different perspective, it really helps us and allow us to open our mind, isn't it? To see it in a different view, to see it in, from a different angle. And that was what I was trying to do is that very often when we only stuck in our own situation, we, we feel so enclosed in it. We feel so stuck in whatever situation we're dealing with. But when we are able to step outside of our own situation, when we're able to see it from a different angle, it opens our minds up, you know, it opens us all up. And for a moment in time, you know, you get to forget your own enclosure, you know, your own situation, your, your, your own fixated moment. And for a moment in time, you get to travel, you get to see different places and you hear different views. And, and I find that that's how it helped me open up to learn about the world. So thank you for sharing that. You know, you're certainly a storyteller. <laughs> we can tell, <laughs> we can tell you certainly well, a storyteller. You, you definitely have taken us through the journey. Even myself now, I'm listening to you, my own story, but you well, still have taken me through a little journey. So that was so beautiful. Thank you for you doing know, that's that. The beauty. Oh, you're welcome. And that's the beauty of literature. That's the beauty of reading versus seeing it in a, in a movie, right? Or, or on, YouTube or something. Those have their own value, certainly. But I think that there's something about reading in literature where, you know, we, we've all been in, in a degree of isolation over these past few months, right? Mm -hmm. For many people, they're facing isolation for the first time. For those of us who have experienced isolation, it's all too familiar. For some people, it's comfortable. Other people, it's not comfortable at all. And when we talk about connection, we talk about how do we connect with other people? How can we, tra travel is such a big part of my world, both professionally and personally. I grew up all over the world. It's been a rhythm in my life uh, perpetually. Um, it's through literature and reading that we get to draw out of the well of our own being the imagery that presents itself. When you're watching a film, that's some, that whoever shot that film, that's through their lens, right? Yes, yes. And they're deciding what the scenes are, they're deciding who the actors are, they're deciding what the smells and textures are that are being depicted, you can't smell a movie. But in a book, when, when you're you know, describing you know, the preparation of food or, or the chopping of wood or, you know, things like that, or the marketplace, your whole sensory equipment is engaged, right? And, and you really are able to immerse yourself in a world that you may not be familiar with. And it's all from the expression of another human being in the pages of a book. And so I, I really am grateful that you wrote this book because 
Um, I think especially now, it's, it's a very important time for people to be reading, not only, uh, and this is what my podcast is about as well, not only reading for their own edification, right, and the pleasure of, of experiencing another person's experience, but also gleaning tools that we can use now to meet this difficult time and also for this uncertain future that none of us knows what's going to happen, you know. Yeah, and thank you for... It's all there. It's all in there. Yes. <laughs> and thank you for reminding us of that. That was exactly why I, um, I began to, to um, do this show. That's exactly why I began this show. Uh, because during the peak of the corona, like I see so many people ask, you know, what book are you reading? What book would you recommend? And... Yeah. As you know, I have the long list of testimonial of, of the readers who send it directly to me. I saw I was encouraged to share. But after I share a few times, I feel as if I'm sitting here trying to write, sell my book. And right. well, it is okay because if you don't sell your own product, who, who else would, right? But I didn't want to just be a bookseller. I really want to help. I really want to help everybody to feel more connected because we're all disconnected and we all are feel feeling this anxiety, anxiousness, not sure what's going on, you know, what the changes are. And so the idea, the thought came was that instead of sitting there feeling anxious and worry, how about we pick up the book and read and feel more connected and find the happiness that we need and travel exactly like you say. You know, even if we travel in our mind, it's still better than sitting there in worriness. And that was where the idea come for this connection show. So thank you for sharing that and thank you for pointing that out. And, and so it's just wonderful that you also have the podcast that allow people to connect in that way as well. So thank you for that too. Well, I'm excited so, to have you as a guest so we can talk about this even more. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, another thing I want to say about your book is that I think that it's suitable for all generations right? Mm. Whether you're a teenager and you have not traveled the world yet and you're dreaming like you did at 15 mm. of, of stepping out of your experience and like your sister, you know, survived an, an amazing adventure at sea and made her way to another continent. Yeah. Um, you know, I think what you have done is, is give permission uh, through your action of, of creating this book to anyone else who feels that that same kind of an impulse, um, and that can come at any age. You know, I'm I'm in my fifties, and that that can come at this age as well. I'm finding we're always having to learn new life skills to meet every different stage of life. Mm -hmm. And I could see uh, couples lying in bed reading this book aloud to each other, yeah, sharing that journey together, and then talking about it each chapter, talking about the 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 five Fs, yeah. right? Yeah. Or, or the, the three hearts concept, you know, all of these things. I think, you know, you can grow and develop and build yourselves as a couple um, yeah. through, through this kind of a tool as well. So, bravo. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out because the vision of the Connection Show, it will extend. The vision of the Connection Show is that eventually we will have everybody together in one place to discuss the book, to discuss the learning, to grow together because there's many layers to the message. There's many, many stories and all the readers have told me so far that each time they reread it, a different story comes more obvious, a different lesson comes more obvious because at different stage of life, we feel different, we look different, uh, not look different, yeah. we feel different, but think different. And of course we look different too. <laughs> <laughs> but, and you're right too, to point out that it's for different generations because at the moment, the youngest reader is 12 years old and the oldest yeah. is beyond 70. And that's because, that's because it's not just my own story because you've read the book so you know now. And I'm impressed, I'm amazed that you read it all in one sitting. That's incredible. <laughs> you must be such a fast reader. So um, <laughs> the, 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 the stories in the book is not just my story. It's many people's life stories that I share, that I witness yeah. and share with the hope and the goal that to share the value, to share that, you know, when things don't work, how do we make it work? That was the theme of all the stories, is how to make things work when things don't work. 
So thank you for well, putting that out. I, I also I also felt that that by telling uh, sharing these other stories that you do have a personal connection with, um, that that it really brings home the message of the book about connection that we are not self-contained little bubbles, mm -hmm. right? And only learning by our own experiences that we actually learn by observing the experiences of other people and stories that they tell us. This is why storytelling is so important. That's another thing that you've done here is that you give permission to other people to share their stories and to share their observations and what they have learned to inspire others. If everyone on the planet started sharing their stories in this way, how many stories, this is the basis of my theater work too, how many stories are being lost with the people that carry them? Because yeah. we are not given permission to share these stories, yeah. right? So many things must be kept secret. So mm -hmm. many things are, are, you know, the, the story of, of the woman who, who uh, I'm, I don't want to give away a uh, <laughs> you know, story in the book that, about, about an experience you had when you were eight years old, I think mm -hmm. it was, yes, yes. Um, where, where you were sort of in this hypnotic state and you were taken advantage of and the way that your family handled it, the way that you handled it. Um, those are stories that people don't tell very often. And I think that um, the, the power in you sharing not only your own stories, but the stories of other people, it automatically, effortlessly gives permission to other people to share their own. And permission is a very powerful thing. And it doesn't take much, yes. does it? Yes, and 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 uh, thank you for pointing that out, for sharing that, because you know it, you shared the exact view as Susan, the high school teacher who had shared. She said she's a, the guest number two on the show, I think. She said, Linda, thank you for giving me permission to share my story, and now she's published three books. You know, she was she tried. Wow. Yes, so after reading my book, she's published three books, and she said, I want you to be able to, I want everybody to get the same permission that you gave me to share their story. And also, I feel that it's through stories, it's how we connect to the different generations, you know, from our grandparents to us, to our children and our grandchildren. It is really through stories that we can weave through the generation gaps, because otherwise each generation has their own gaps. And so then it'll be all quite separated. But it's from stories, I find it's how we can weave through the gaps of the generations. And that was what I was hoping to do as well. So thank you for pointing that out. It sounds yeah. like you enjoy the book so much. You got so much I depth did. into the book. So then I'm curious, was there any action taken? What actions have you taken after you read? It's a very validating book because, you know, you and I both talk a lot about tuning in. Uh, the words I tend to use are frequency. It's as if there's a giant radio, mm -hmm. right? And you're the one who has the power to go and turn it on mm -hmm. and find, turn the dial to find the frequency that you resonate with, right? right? Whether it's a particular style of music that you want to listen to, a mood that you're in, a talk show that you are interested in the subject, you find the, the resonance that you are putting out at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And I think for me, this was a validation of that, right. that, that there is this cosmic universal radio, right. that if we take a half step back and we notice that there are people on this planet, this tiny little planet, that are on the exact same frequency as you are, mm. um, I think that that's, that's something that I can take from this book, is I can talk about how I found another frequency. Right? And if you resonate with my frequency, you're going to resonate with Linda's frequency as well. Mm -hmm. Right. And you may be able to find bits in there. You know, I could pick up any kind of self help, you know, life coaching book and find answers and I can find tools. And I can find, but what's unique about your book is that it is so personal, that you have allowed it to be so personal and that it's a universal tool. Uh, it's like those things that you can get at the, at the hardware store and that you can do a hundred different things with that one tool. That's how I felt with the book, right? Because you address not only your beautiful story and your biography and your feelings of everything from motion sickness to, <laughs> to adventure, um, 
but you also talk about marriage mm -hmm. and fidelity and you talk about personal success you talk about parenting you talk about friendship skills right and making those those personal connections but also the connections to oneself which is the foundation of it all mm -hmm. right so yeah. You know, again, I can't say that there's one thing that I'm bringing forward out of this book or, or engaging with. There are so many beautiful uh, uh, opportunities in this one tool right. to use. And, and there are things I'm sure, I'm positive mm -hmm. that a month, two months, a year from now, a situation will come up and I can go back and I can say, let me reread that again. What was the third F? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, if I if I find myself in a financial bind, or if I find myself in a in a place of of personal darkness, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. uh, which we all experience, mm -hmm. how I think I, what I will find is that it will be easier to click myself out of that and back into a state of positivity and uh, uh, hopefulness and forward thinking. Um, you know, and I'm really grateful to have that tool to reference hmm. that I might not have had otherwise hmm. if you hadn't written it. Wow, thank you. It's congratulations because it all goes back to your action. It all goes back to your willingness, your, your growth mindset and your open-mindedness that you would pick it up and read, you know, because we all know, um, especially being a art director, a theater director, and you have a whole wealth of experience and knowledge already, right? <laughs> a lot of people would say, I, I don't need to read another book, you know, I know enough. <laughs> or, well, you know, or they might buy the book and it sits on the shelf. So I want to say thank you and I want to say congratulations for taking that action, you know, for remaining this life-longing spirit, you know, and I think that's the most precious thing is to to have this lifelong learning spirit and attitude where we can learn and grow every single day because it's very easy for us to say, ah, you know, I've known enough, I've read enough, you know, and that's when the learning closes and that's when opportunity in life closes, you know, and that's when we're starting to become stagnant and still because there's no freshness coming in, there's no new ideas coming in. So I want to say congratulations and say thank you for picking up the book. And it just sounds so amazing. And I, I hope that exactly like what you say, that the book will accompany you through your journey for the rest of the time that you're in Spain or whether you go back to UK or go back to America because you're such a traveler. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But, you know, I, 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 I know that as I come across people who are feeling lost, mm -hmm. as I do, um, or feeling stuck or feeling like they're in a cycle of negativity that it's difficult to break from. Um, I now have a tool in my kit to be able to share with them. You know, I know a lot of people as, as you do as well, mm -hmm. who have been called to life skills, mentoring or life coaching or, you know, any, any kind of helpful thing. And I think very often we will invest, I think you even alluded to this in your book, we'll invest you know, in a training or in a conference and, and come out of it feeling like, well, that was a waste of money. I didn't learn anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but if you flip it around and you look at how you can feel grateful and uplifted that you have connected with other people who share your frequency and how it validates the lessons that you've learned, you know, lifelong learning is a key message in what I do as well. Um, it's not only about the lifelong learning, however, it's about the love of lifelong learning. Absolutely, we could see that in you. State, perpetual state of our human experience yeah. is yeah. learning. Yes. We have to learn at every stage of life. Learn to love it. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> because then your curiosity is always, <laughs> you know, it's always deep. And you're always looking for yeah. those different places that are unexpected jewels. It's like yeah. coming upon a treasure in an ancient temple. You come in and, and you turn the corner and there's an unexpected jewel that you did not expect 
right? How beautiful uh, is that? I love the way you put it. And it sounds but, like, you know, you, you have this plan of keeping the book as a tool with you to continuously passing it on. So that is just so wonderful. That is yeah, so well, beautiful. And, and, and you've made it very accessible and very affordable. Um, yes, yes. On Kindle, it's, yes. it's, it's so, I mean, anybody, no matter what your budget, if you get it on Kindle, yes. which is free, um, yes. you so, can get the book. So during COVID-19, I have reduced it right down to less than a dollar to help everybody to Amazing. get it. So, yeah, yeah. Amazing. So there's no excuse. There's no <laughs> excuse for people not, because hey, listen, you have a following, right? I have a following. Uh, my podcast is heard in, in 13 countries today. Um, everybody has the opportunity hearing this conversation to go and for less than a dollar, get this book digitally. You don't have yeah. to hold it in your hand and carry it in your pocket, yeah. right? Yeah. It can be in your mobile, it can be on your laptop, it can be, you know, uh, if you don't have a, a technology that you own yourself because not everybody does, mm. you can go to a library mm. and find and, it there. And if you can, of course, get the, the paperback because it is something that you would want to take with you wherever you go. I've got so yeah. many readers tell me they take it on the plane and I've got one uh, amazing marketing director told me that he took it on the plane, but then they got stuck in an airport for over six hours. And so then uh. he ended up he ended up chatting with this lady who happened to be from hometown. They both are from Sydney. And then that because of the a length of time of over six hours, they, they got the opportunity to share personal conversations and it go down to the path that she needs to redefine her career path. And that's when he's like, here, take this book. <laughs> I believe this oh. book will help you. And, and so it's just so beautiful to see all the love and connections being shared around the world. I'm just feeling so, so grateful to everybody for sharing the message because that's all I wanted is to share the message to help everybody as many people as we can. Who, who prefer a paper book, yes. right? To know yes. that it's available either way is yes. a real gift because yes. there's something about the tangibility of a book, the holding, yes. you know, yes. the, mar the holding of a page, you know, yes. uh, to hold your place or taking a highlighter or writing notes and, yes. you know, there are some <laughs> things you can't really do electronically yes. and efficiently. And there are some people who just like to sit under a tree when there's yeah. no Wi-Fi signal and read a book. <laughs> yeah. you know, and and also you can have it on your bookshelf, just like you said, yeah. whenever you feel like you need to revisit it, you just get it and then read again. And so before COVID-19, part of the proceeds from the book goes to support four charities around the world. I was going to say, I was so impressed with that as well. Yeah. You know, and it, that helps. Yeah, so, but it, it's only now that during COVID-19, I just reduced it so that everybody can access to it. So, yeah, thank you well, so much. Well, not only can they access it, but they can buy it as a gift for other people. Yes. And still benefit your charity. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> you, you can buy, Christmas is coming up, everybody. Yes, <laughs> yes, I have, uh, I have um, guest number one, Christine. She, since last month, have told me that she bought another 20 copy, soft copies for her friends because the price has been reduced and she could do it. And then I had, um, when the book was first launched, I had a, um, a uh, uh, I think he was a disco jock and he bought mm -hmm. for the teachers and principals the printed copy and he asked me to sign it all. So, it, and that was for Chris, Christmas gift. That's why you reminded of that, reminded me of that story. Um, he I bought it for Christmas teacher, gift. Every teacher, no matter where they are in the world, and hopefully this, this book is or will be translated into other languages because it is a universal theme. I think every teacher, every teacher should have a copy of this book because not only will they be able to use it for their own, uh, you know, training in a mm. way, mm. Um, but they can also refer to it and use many of the tools that you offer in the book to teach their students of all ages. There's something appropriate for every age. One of the big things that, I, that is an impulse for me to be involved in life skills education is because I was in schools as an educator for a very long time. And something that is still being talked about 
is that there is not adequate life skills education in the school curriculum, right? Everything comes back to testing and, uh, you know, everything is built around numbers, right? And, and testing, not human beings. Yeah. And so to be able to incorporate into whatever subject, it could be yeah. mathematics, you can incorporate yeah. financial literacy. Yeah. It could be into health class that you can uh, yeah. talk about sexuality and intimacy, right? There are so many things and, and sociology, you can talk about, uh, you know, connections and you can talk in, in social studies and I, history about, about other culture. You know, I mean, there's so much in there that I think a teacher especially could really benefit from. So whether you are a teacher or whether you know a teacher, this would be a wonderful gift for yourself or for, for people in the, in the teaching career. I am so, so pleased you brought that up. In fact, one teacher, one high school teacher from US has already got in touch with me and we're working on it because ever since the book's been published, I've got change makers around the world say, Linda, we need to teach your book's wisdom into school, exactly like what you say. You know, we need to add to it at the emotional um, intelligence side of it instead of just sitting for the test. And so if any teachers is watching, I would extend an invitation to you to just get in touch with get in touch with me. We are working to put that knowledge into a curriculum to teach. So with Fantastic. the high school teacher that I'm working with at the moment, we're starting from from a baby level. We're starting from a preschool level, and so it's got we can work into every single level right through to university, right through That's to great. adulthood. So thank you again for pointing that out. You point out so many wonderful things. <laughs> well, I received so many wonderful things. I'm just being honest. <laughs> it's, it's just amazing, isn't it? Like, you know, you, you get so much out of it. And that's exactly what happens when you have an open mindset. You know, when you have an open mind frame. I, I, I share in the book that I use the word mind frame instead of mindset because mindset it sounds like just one set. You know, one set of mind, one set of thinking. Whereas for me, I like to say, to think that our our brain, our mind is like a whole framework. You know, that you can have different compartments and different categories. And so, yeah. So when we have an open mindset, like an open thinking mind frame, you see more and you absorb more, and you can you can take more, even just with one book, exactly like what you're doing. You know, whereas with someone who are not so open. Even if you try to load information to them, they can't take it. They don't do They just don't take it in. You know, it, it's just like a saying, right? You know, close mind, close open doors. Mm -hmm. Open mind, open closed doors. And so it's just amazing how much you got out of the book. I want to say congratulations one more time. <laughs> Heaps of actions I've uh, taken. Talking about <laughs> taking actions. <laughs> Talking about taking actions. You've taken a whole lot of actions, you know, not only to be curious enough and open minded enough to actually purchase the book, to read it all in one go, in one setting. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't put it down, really. Because, you know, because I'm all, I'm interested in every aspect uh, of, of what you wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I was marveling at, at how you were so efficient. Because the book is not that long. It's not that big a book. Mm -hmm. But it felt like it was that much information in a book this size <laughs> you know it's so concise and 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 clearly and easy it's so easy to read you know oh, and thank you. I, just, I just went from one page to the next and there was another and there are some pages where it's just one expression that you have said right <laughs> so that you can really focus in uh like a meditation and let that become uh let it sort of absorb take it it's 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 like the human breath I found it very comfortable reading because there are there are chapters or there are passages where it feels like an out breath, right? You're telling a story, you're expressing the information and the wisdom there. Yeah. And then you give your reader the opportunity to take an in breath by just yeah. focusing on one concept or one quote or one thought yeah. and just sitting with it in meditation and 
Bravo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh. I think that's probably why a lot of people ask me, are you a, a, a psychologist or are you a philosopher? <laughs> so, so they're trying to, and I would say, I'm just me. I'm just being me. <laughs> and, and that's how I tell the story is that I didn't tell the story from any particular professional standpoint, but except from me and, and being who I am. And that's exactly what I, I want to encourage everybody is just to be you. It's just to be you. There's so many not enoughness, isn't it? There's so many like, you know, am I good enough? Have I got enough education? Have I got enough pieces of paper? Have I got enough yeah. degrees? You know, am I tall enough? Am I skinny enough? And, and so I just want to share with everybody that just be you, you know, you are enough, you know, you're everything. And, and that's how I shared it. So thank you so much one more time for coming on the show. Beautiful. And it's been great. Thank you. Thank I'm excited you. to have you as a guest as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll catch you next show. Bye for now.